Hello out there Akronites and welcome once again to Around Akron with Blue Green and today we have a fun episode ahead of us. As you can see we're here at Portage Lakes and this episode is all about Portage Lakes. We're going to go to Portage Lakes State Park and talk to them about this vast amount of property that's there for you to enjoy year round. And while we're at the park, we're gonna take a walk in the woods and investigate those metal cages you see all through the woods around there. That's a disc golf course. And did you know Portage Lake State Park has the best disc golf course in the nation? One of them at least, but you gotta check it out. Have you ever wondered about the history of this great place? Yeah, Portage Lakes. This is an amazing asset to the city of Akron, to this part of the country, to fishing, to boating, to uh, sailboating, to, ski to skiing, to ice fishing. It is just an all around great place to live and a great place to visit. But did you know the history of Portage Lakes? Stick around, I'm gonna teach you a little bit about this place, Portage Lakes. Now to kick this show off today, all about Portage Lakes, we're gonna go hunting for dragons. That's right, dragons on the lake here. Not only are there dragons, there is a strong group of women that are cancer survivors, breast cancer survivors, and they have tamed the dragons, and we're gonna go watch them race dragons on Portage Lakes. It's not so much for my hope, but to give others hope, because I'm a 27 year survivor, you know, so it's kind of like behind me. But for the people that are coming in new, they can see that even at my age, you can be an athlete, you can be strong and, and uh, be as healthy as anyone else. We're a little bit different from a support group because the focus is on the athleticism and the paddling and the camaraderie. Um, I think people see our paddlers and what we've accomplished and the strength that we gain from each other and that that gives people hope. Um, new paddlers are given hope by seeing survivors paddling, um, folks that have had a recurrence of breast cancer are given hope because they know that others on the team have faced similar challenges. Twenty years ago, breast cancer patients, women, were very limited in what they could do after, especially after a mastectomy. And so, uh, Dr. Donald McKenzie, a sports physician, decided he wanted to prove that women could do something. So he started a dragon boat team in Canada, and I believe they were on the water for about six weeks together. No one, and lymphedema is the is one of the problems that can happen because of lymph nodes being removed and radiation and that type of thing and it can cause a lot of swelling, painful swelling in the, in the arm. So uh, no one got lymphedema during those six weeks and no one who had lymphedema, there was flu, uh, had any flare ups. So um, it was basically determined by a lot of data that he put together that it was, you know, women could, you know, compete in something like this. And after the six weeks, he said, okay, you're done. And the women said, oh no, we're not. We want to stay in this boat because they had just become, you know, so in love with it. We're all working together, so we all have to try our hardest and, and uh, do our very best to, because it's a team. And if we have a good teamwork, then we're going to do well in our race. So. Um, Everybody just is working hard and trying to keep focused. Lots and lots of practice at both individual performance, how we can be better as an individual in the technique that we have in paddling. And then the awareness of the, of the paddlers around you, your seatmate, and being in sync with her. The, the folks at the big front of the boat, which are called the strokes, which set the pace of the dragon boat paddling, being in sync with them. There are occasional times when our coach will have us close our eyes and just listen to our paddles going in the water and hearing how we can be in sync with each other 
kind of puts that into perspective when we open our eyes back up again and we you know, see all the distractions, if you will, around us. We realize that being in sync is the most important thing that we can do. People always say, and coaches will always tell you, that you can have lots of power in your, in your stroke, but unless you're in sync, all 20 women or all 20 paddlers, you won't be as successful or as, as, as efficient as a boat together. It's just a, an exhilarating feeling. Um, just, it's like one heartbeat. I mean, you're all working together. You've all got a common goal. Um, and, you know, you just kind of get into that groove and, and all your cares of the day just kind of fall to the wayside. And you can really just, you know, feel the water, feel the wind, enjoy the sunshine. It's just a, a wonderful feeling. Everyone that's in that boat shares that experience that you've had. Um, I think one of the amazing things about the camaraderie that we have with an all breast cancer survivor team that's very unique is that we have all kinds of stories and feelings of our own experience with breast cancer. And sometimes it's hard to share that with a friend who hasn't gone through that experience. And you can find yourself going on and on about something which really they can't understand because they haven't gone through it. But when you're with a team with all breast cancer survivors, there's an unkind of spoken understanding that you know what it's like. Even though everyone's experience with breast cancer is different, you, you, you feel each other's concerns and worries, and sometimes you don't even have to say anything. I'm out here at Portage Lake State Park, and let me tell you, this place is a gem. If you haven't been here, you need to come and check it out. We have a great lake here for swimming at Turkey Foot. You can also do some skiing here, water skiing that is. You can also do some jet skiing. You can do boating, sailboating. You can do fishing, and let me tell you, the fishing is good here. I'm a fisherman, and I know what I'm talking about. This place is amazing for graduation parties. For your dog, there's a dog park here. Your dog can actually jump in the lake. There's a skate park, there's so many great things. Let's go talk to the management of Portage Lake State Park and see what this gym is all about. I was an outside kind of guy. Uh, my dad and I grew up looking at stars. I wanted to be an astronaut. And then, you know, of course, glasses came on by the second grade and uh, my passion for outdoors, animals, uh, just being outside. Um, with nature was, was always a big passion of mine. Fishing, uh, I didn't do a whole lot of hunting, but fishing was always something that, that drew my dad, myself, and my brother. Uh, it was one of those places where you can go and just absolutely relax and have that great memories and those conversations and all those things that come with that. Portage Lakes, uh, has historically been one of the best fishing uh, lakes systems uh, throughout the state, especially with the uh, competitive bass clubs. Um, the bass always tend to be larger, uh, fight more, have that all that, you know, everything that those bass clubs look for when they go out to do their tournaments and things like that. Um, also, the population of crappie, bluegill tend to be extremely high here at Portage Lakes. Uh, which makes it just just a wonderful place if you're if you're an avid fisherman or if you're a uh, you know a novice. Um, it allows you to get out there and just throw the bobber in. You're going to get bites. You're going to get hits. You're going to catch that first fish. Um, you know, which I have two children and taking them out and having them fish for the first time is just it's fantastic, especially when they hold that fish up for the first time. So the the ability to have great competition fishing for those experienced people and have the ability to have that novice action is great. Uh, well here in, at Portage Lakes uh, we do have a public beach uh, that that is extremely used. Um, the beak is, beach is cleaned, raked every single day, no litter, picnic tables, areas to grill out, have a picnic, 
enjoy the water. Uh, there's a swim beach that is uh, safety secured, so that way uh, no boating access allowed in that area with our uh, navigational buoys placed in there. There are courtesy docks for people that are out on the lake that want to come in, have a picnic on the beach, relax a little bit, and then can, can head back out and, and fish or do whatever. Um, so that's one of the big ones. Uh, we also have some fishing areas off of Cottage Grove. It's a boat swim area. Um, it's located over by uh, some of the marinas over there. Uh, back in the cove there and that's you uh, anchor or moor your boat and you hop out and and swim in an area that is designated only for swimming for boats uh, so you're not kind of out in the middle uh, in traffic anything like that it gives you a very safe uh, secure area to to recreate We have um, approximately five trails uh, that are here that are have been around. Uh, our biggest one being the Shoreline Trail, which is a loop trail. Um, it, it encompasses the entire state park. Uh, so you not only get to see some of the uh, dense forest area, but you also get to take that walk on the beach in those areas that are a little more towards the water. Um, we have the dog park. Uh, it's, it's a highly used area. Um, in fact, uh, dog park was put in in, I want to say, 2012, I believe. Um, very used. Uh, we are looking actually to uh, make some improvements on it uh, due to the high use. Um, very, very nice place to unleash your dog, your pet, and let them just run around and enjoy it. We have uh, an area that is um, designated just for uh, skateboarding activities, uh, also roller skaters as well, inline skating uh, of that nature. Uh, it's located close to, uh, we also have a uh, basketball court that's right next to it. Uh, all that area is located down towards our beach uh, in the main park here uh, at Portage Lakes. Today, that it's just crazy. We run around and there's all kinds of stuff. We're always so busy. But to take 20 minutes just to watch the kids slide down the slide or take them on a real quick planet walk and, and say, you know, here's Earth. At the very end's the sun. That, you know, the distance is, you know, millions of miles away, light years away. Um, those are those moments where you're teaching but you're having a great, great time doing it at the same time. So I think from, from an ODNR and state parks and watercraft uh, side, um, making those memories are, is the biggest and most um, enjoyable part of my job. While I was out here at Portage Lake State Park, I took a walk through the woods and I found this lighthouse you see right down there. And a lot of you have probably seen that in your boat. That's on Turkey Foot Lake. And that's not a squirrel trap. No, no, no. It's not a uh, bird trap. It's not a bat house. What that is is this disc golf course. And there's actually an 18-hole disc golf course here at Portage Lakes that you need to check out. Let's go talk to these guys and see what this place is all about. There are 211, I just checked this, 211 disc golf courses in the state of Ohio and Portage Lakes Disc Golf Course is rated number eight in, this, in the entire state of Ohio. Many people just like to walk uh, in the parks, of course, um, and when we constructed the disc golf course, we opened up much of the park, so it had opened up many areas for walkers and fishermen, so they are now using the venues that we've cleared out for their own um, own leisure activities, which is great. Uh, parks are a multi-leisure activity area, so we're all for, uh, you know, everybody using, using the areas as well. But uh, yeah, um, sometimes in the summer, even the shade, it's kind of warm, but uh, it's, a, it's a great course to play. People love playing here. Uh, of course, you don't need a club. This, this is your club here, okay? So it uh, cuts down on cost considerably. Um, as far as uh, losing them, well, that happens, 
of course. Uh, what people do is they put their name on the back of the disc and we have a box up there and people that find them can put them in the box and they can get them returned that way. Uh, but economic wise, uh, it's a very, very low economy sport to play. Most disc golf courses do not charge to play as this course does not charge to play. In golf, you take a stroke and it's, you count it as one and you end up trying to get it into a little hole. Uh, in disc golf, it's the same concept. Uh, every time you pick up the disc and throw it, it's counted as one and when you end up getting it into a basket, then you've hold out and you, you score it the same as regular ball golf. And there are all sorts of booklet full of rules where there are people are very passionate and serious about this game, so there are some uh, rules to be followed for sure. Uh, much like ball golf, I mean, when somebody's uh, throwing a disc, you know, you generally do not talk. Uh, you generally kind of stand in the area where you're not real visible to the person that's throwing the disc. Um, we do have rules, much like ball golf, they're a bit more laid back. Uh, you know, you just gotta uh, be respectful of other people, basically. Um, you know, it's just sort of a, um, uh, be kind and just come out here and have fun. All you need basically is a, is a Frisbee and it can be uh, anything from a, a, a Frisbee that you might throw on the beach or to a dog. You can certainly play the game with that, but uh, anybody that plays the game, the sport of disc golf for any length of time really uh, needs to use the discs that are made for the game, which are uh, a lot different than something you might throw to a dog. This is a putter. Okay, and you can tell a putter because uh, of its more rounded edge. Okay, so this is uh, my bag here, and one of my bags, and there are 18 discs in this bag. Uh, people carry uh, several more than that in some of the bags they carry in carts and on their backs, but uh, this being a rounded disc, it doesn't go as far, but uh, it's made for the shorter shots, putting, approaches, etc. Um, you get into your, your mid-ranges, which you can see the difference here. One's a little rounded, they get a little more uh, aerodynamic as you get into the mid-discs. And from there, you can get into your, your drivers, which are even more aerodynamic. There's a lot of people in the area that just don't even know what disc golf is since there's only two in the county and uh, disc golf really didn't start until 1975. There was one disc golf course in the United States in 1975 and now there are probably right around 6,000. So the game is growing dramatically. And more and more are playing um, you know, each year uh, the numbers on, on disc golf are just rising dramatically to be honest with you and we have websites that support disc golf so uh, if a person happens to be in Ohio, in Akron or whatever they can look up Portage Lakes Disc Golf Course and say oh there's a good golf course let's, let's go play. A lot of people have heard of Portage Lakes, a lot of people live on Portage Lakes but what do you actually know about Portage Lakes? I mean the history of Portage Lakes. Why is Portage Lakes even here? What does Portage actually even mean? Well, let me give you a little history lesson. Let's go see what Portage Lakes is all about. To learn about the history of Portage Lakes, you have to learn a little bit about the geology of Ohio. Between 24,000 and 14,000 years ago, the Wisconsin Glacier covered about half of Ohio. The glacier was massive and extremely heavy, causing it to push down the soil and bedrock below. As the glacier retreated, most of it drained off into Lake Erie, leaving behind small kettle lakes and lots of water in the form of rivers and creeks. 
after the glacier retreated, it left a divide in Ohio. Water to the northwestern part flows to Lake Erie, which is known as the Lake Erie Watershed. To the southeastern part, water flows to the Ohio River through the Ohio River Watershed. This area was not only rich in water, but resources such as game, area to grow crops, area to forage, area to live, and of course, plenty of fresh drinking water. In 1785, the area was home to the Delaware, the Chippewa, the Ottawa, and the Wyandotte tribes. Native Americans would portage or carry their canoes from the Cuyahoga River down to the Tuscaroras River. This would lead them directly from Lake Erie to the Cuyahoga River, then they would portage their canoes down to the Tuscaroras River, which would lead them into the Muskingum River, which would then lead them into the Ohio River, and all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. After the Native Americans, the Europeans began to colonize the area, and they built canals. And with the boom in the canal system, there was a need for fresh water. And in 1827, reservoirs were created in the Green and Franklin Townships, and along the lakes in Coventry Township. And those lakes were kettle lakes, which were remnants of the glaciers. It was year-round fun in Portage Lakes. It became a playground for the wealthy in Akron. You could fish, you could boat, you could canoe, you could sail, you could swim, and in the wintertime, you could ice skate and ice fish in the lakes as well. In 1913, the canals were closed to transportation, leaving the following lakes, East Reservoir, West Reservoir, Turkey Foot Lake, Rex Lake, Mud Lake, Miller Lake, Long Lake, North Reservoir, Howard Lake, and Nesmith Lake. It took the weight of a glacier and thousands and thousands of years to create a place as special as Portage Lakes, Ohio. Thank you again for tuning in to Around Akron with Blue Green. Now, if you have any questions, comments, or you'd like to see something on the show, you can connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or you can watch past episodes or send me a message on www.aroundakronwithbluegreen.com. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Around Akron with Blue Green.